Hey y'all, it's Kerr again. Alright, the first thing I want to say is sorry about the quality of this video. I kind of dropped my phone and it cracked along the front camera, so it's a little messed up. But, uh, this is kind of an update video for me. And, uh, sorry I hadn't been posting much if you've been waiting for my videos. Because I've been working quite a bit with my stepdad. And just hadn't really had time. I've been working with my truck a lot too. Uh, because I got to do my emissions next month and I had to check engine light and I knew I wouldn't pass if I did that. So I finally figured out what was wrong with it. It was the O2 sensor. It was bank one, sensor two, and bank two, sensor one. Well, that would have been fine. I would have replaced that before if I would have known which one it was, because, but I don't know which one's bank one and which one's bank two because I have a 102 sensor on one side and three on the other so I had no idea which one was which. But uh, finally got that fixed. I just replaced all of my O2 sensors and reset the check engine light and it hadn't come back on. It's been a couple weeks now since I've done that. See, I've been kind of working as general labor around a construction site with my stepdad. Been doing pretty good with that. A lot more money than I have done logging. Although I do still like logging a lot. I need to get to take some off. We've got a lot of logs on the ground that need to be took off. But today I'm doing it on Copenhagen Strait. Uh, so yeah. I know before in a couple of my, video in my videos I said that I could never do Copenhagen straight because it gave me a headache but uh, ever since I I tried Copenhagen Mint and ever since I tried that I did that for about a week after that and I've been able to dip anything like you you guys remember my story about Grizzly Wintergreen and how it gave me a massive headache and I was sitting in a chair doing this like the whole time because I was too buzzed well I can dip Grizzly Wintergreen too now so that's weird I can dip just about anything. I hadn't really tried any of the skull flavors except straight. I tried skull straight. Tastes a lot like Copenhagen straight, except a little juicier and it's more expensive. But uh, what I'm really wanting to try is Seneca vanilla. Is it vanilla? No, no, it's a. Uh, I think it's cream soda or something like that. Seneca. It's one of the Seneca flavors. It's like either vanilla or cream soda or something like that. I really want to try that because I heard that it tastes a lot like Skull Vanilla, and I've always wanted to try Skull Vanilla. So yeah, I've also been working on my tractor. I got I got a little Economy Jim Dandy tractor. It's like about the size of a lawnmower, but it's a garden tractor. And what was wrong with it was it wasn't starting. So, uh, the first thing that popped in my head was it's the voltage regulator because it wasn't charging the battery enough. Well, that wasn't the problem really. Actually, I don't know if that was the problem or not because I don't know how to test a voltage regulator. But, I found out that one of the problems with it was the battery. See, we originally thought that it was a 6-volt charging system, so it took a 6-volt battery. It's not. It's a 12-volt. The generator is a 12-volt generator. The voltage regulator that was on it, I took it down to Florida Brothers. Really would recommend them. They're really good. If you live in the Murfreesboro area and you have a tractor that you need to work on, I would suggest uh, Florida Brothers if you hadn't already gone there. But I took it down to Florida Brothers and they typed the serial number of it into the computer and it's a 12 volt voltage regulator. So that was one of the problems was the battery was a 6 volt battery. So I got a 12 volt battery and put it on there and it's... I hadn't really tried to start it yet but I've, I've cranked it some and it seems to be doing a lot better. The other one... The old battery I had, it, it was 12 volt, but it only had like 190 cranking amps. And the one that I have now is 300 cranking amps, which is a lot more. So, 
hopefully that's it. I also, I did have a voltage regulator because that's what I thought was wrong with it before, so I went to TSC and bought another one. Uh, I thought it was a 6 volt one because that's what I thought the charging system was, was 6 volt, but it wasn't, it was 12. So as it turns out, I, I looked on the side of the voltage regulator and it was a 12 volt voltage regulator, which surprised me because it was in a 6 volt box. So I don't know what's going on with TSC with that, but... Just trying to think of something else to talk about. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Also, my grandfather has this large collection of tractors, and most of them are old farm walls. Recently, he's done gone to Stone River Manor. You know, he checked himself in there because he's not feeling good and he needs somewhere to be taken care of. So he went down there and checked himself in. And he, he likes it down there. He says it's a pretty good place. But one day he came back and had like a day pass to kind of come back to the house and stuff. And when he was there, I stopped by to get a gas jug because I forgot my gas jug at home. When he gave me a gas jug and while I was there, he also gave me an old Farmall Model H. Like, it's, it's like a 40s model. I hadn't, I got the serial numbers on my phone for the years, but I haven't checked it yet. Uh, but the problem with it was that the engine was locked up on it. So, you know, I'm sitting there. And my buddy and dad worked on a lot of farm oils before, so he told me to go get some Marvel, uh, Marvel oil. So I went and got two bottles of that, and I poured it down in the cylinders, took the spark plugs out and poured it in the cylinders. It's four cylinders. And I let that sit for a little bit. And then after that, I tried to do it. I let it sit overnight and then I came back the next day and I tried to turn the engine. It wouldn't turn. So I'm thinking that it's probably in really bad condition inside the engine. Because based on the head, the head of it, like around the valves and the lifters and stuff like that, on top of it, had a lot of dried grease and like just like dust around it. I hadn't gotten to clean that much, but I took the head off, and I looked inside the cylinders. The cylinders inside there, and even the pistons, looked brand new. I was so surprised at that. So I think there's something flying around over there, and it's making a lot of racket with its wings. And I don't know what it is. Well, it looked brand new. And my uncle looked at it, and he said that that he thinks it should the uh, the engine should break loose. Well, I tried to break it loose after I took the head off, and it still wouldn't come loose. Now I don't know, I can't remember now if I had it in gear or not, because if it was in gear, it wouldn't turn because then the transmission would have turned, the back wheels would have turned. I don't know if it wasn't in gear, then that means the engine's still locked up. But uh, I hadn't really gotten around to working on that in a while because I've been working with my stepdad. And uh, I need to get back to it, actually. Because it, with the head off and if it rains, there's there's a tarp. Of, he, uh, uh, my uncle put a tarp. I put the hood back on it after I took the head off because I didn't want water to get in, inside the engine. And my uncle put a tarp over the engine. So, but, you know, I mean water moisture could still get in there so I need to get back over there and work on that some before water does get in the engine but he said that what I could do is if I couldn't turn it by myself with it out of gear what I could do is I could put it in gear and then I could put it in like reverse or something and then hook it up to my truck and try to pull it backwards and then when the tires turn it'll turn the transmission which should turn the engine So I've been working with that song. I'm hoping it'll run. There's also a sickle mower over there that I've been wanting to get to because 
I kind of wanted to get into cutting hay for a while, but I never had the equipment. And now that I got farm oil, if I can get it to run, I also want to try to get a sickle mower to put on it, and then I can cut the hay. And I, I can get a buddy that, or I can get a buddy to rake it, or I thought about this actually. I thought about it a lot, <laughs> honestly. Because while I was working for my stepdad around a construction site, the one thing I needed to do was weed eat around it. And the grass was probably about like three feet tall. So I weeded it all down, and then I had to rake it up. And I was just thinking, you know, this dries really fast. And doing that's a lot like cutting hay. Or not cutting hay, but like letting it dry and stuff. So what I was thinking was I can get like six rake heads, like metal rakes. And then I could take the head of them, and I could put them on a bar. And, you know, the farm oils have the lift oil, the hydraulic lift system. So I thought about what I could do is I could get three of them, and I could put them on one side of the tractor and get the other three and put it on the other side and have them at an angle to where it kind of puts them into a row. And then I, what I could do is I could drive, and I could rake it into, like, a row. And then, you know, whenever it would dry, I would let it dry for a little bit, then I could drive in between the rows, and then that would rake it into another row. Of course, I have no idea if that'll work or not, but it'd be worth a shot, really. At least to me, it'd be worth a shot. Especially since I have no money to buy a hay rake. I don't even have a baler. <laughs> but I got a buddy that does hay. Uh, bales hay and cuts it and stuff. So I was thinking, you know, if I could just cut it and rake it, I could get him to bale it. And then we could sell it and then we could uh, split it. Really, I'm just trying to think of things that I could use that farm all for. Because right now, at the moment, you know, I'm 17, I don't really have, I, I don't have a house, I don't have land, my dad has land, and so does my, the rest of my family, but I don't have land to do anything with the tractor, really, like, if I had land, I would try to, I would try my best to, like, farm the land, but, like I said before, I have no money, and I don't have equipment either. I mean, I could make a plow, but who uses plows anymore, really? No one uses plows. The main thing that, especially, I've kind of noticed this about farms, is they don't really use plows anymore. But, you know, I was thinking, like all they do is disc it now, really, but I was thinking, you know, if that land's been in their family for generations, then... Before them, back when they used to use plows, I'm guessing that they did plow the land. And then what they did was they would have someone, or not, no, hold on, let me start over. Okay, they would plow the land, and then they would keep plowing and keep plowing and stuff like that, and then plant. And then nowadays, you wouldn't really have to because the land's been plowed for so long, you could just run through it with a disc. But yeah, I thought about doing that. I really, the one thing that I really wanted to do when I graduated and got some land because I was, I was gonna build a house where we're logging at because my dad owns that over there. And the only problem with that is I looked on soil map and it's a lot of rock over there. Like it's mostly rock. So. I would need to bring dirt in, but it's 26 acres, no, 23 acres over there in that little spot that my dad owns. It's 23 acres. I could farm that. And if I planted, I could have an acre for the house, and if I planted 22 acres, I could plant that with tobacco. And that'd be $80,000 off of the harvest I could make, and then, you know, minus the cost of the seeds and the fertilizer and stuff. The only thing about that is, Again, I don't really have equipment. All I would need would be a plow to break the land first, and then a disc to go back over the land and make sure that it's all finely, you know, cut up and stuff. And
And that would be the easy part would be the planting. The hard part would be the harvesting because they make harvesters for them for tobacco, but I don't have any money to, to buy a harvester. So what I would do is I was going to plant barley tobacco. Now barley tobacco, there's only a couple states that have the right climate for barley tobacco, and Tennessee's one of them. With that, you don't need a, a temperature-controlled barn. You don't need that. And also, you, you don't really need a harvester for that. Really don't need a harvester for any of it. But it's easier to harvest barley tobacco by hand than anything else because you don't have to pick leaves off. You just cut the whole stalk down. What you do is you cut the stalk, and then you stick it on. You have this, like, one-by-one one wooden post, and you have two sharp ends of it. You stick one end in the ground, and then you sit there and you cut the stalk of the tobacco and you stick it on there through the other end. And then you just keep doing that until the stick gets full. And then what you do is you go take that to the barn and you would hang it in the barn. The only thing is I don't really I don't really know if I can sit there with a machete and or even a tomahawk or a hatchet or something like that. I don't think I could <laughs> do twenty two acres of that in the summer heat. But it's something that I would like to do when I graduated and got land. I would like to be a tobacco farmer. And my buddy, my buddy Jacob, the one that I do, I do logging with, he he was born on a tobacco farm, but when they were about one, they ran out of money. And so they had to move. And his dad went to go work for Nissan. They moved here. He lived in Clarksville, Tennessee, but... And then they moved here after they ran out of money. But he knows quite a bit about it. Even his mama knows a lot about it because when they were still on the tobacco farm, his dad uh, his dad would like plow it and disc it and then the his mom would use the setter and his dad would drive the tractor for the setter and his mom would sit there and she would put the tobacco the uh, I don't know if you'd call them seedlings or not, because what you do is before you plant them, you have to uh, you make like a little truck patch, and then you just spread the seeds around there, and then once the seeds grow to about like three inches to six inches in height, you uh, take them, and then you transplant them into the field. So his mom would sit there, and she would put the plants into the transplanter, or the setter, and then it would drop it in the ground. And she told me the story about one time she was driving the setting tractor and his dad was planting them. And she said that after they got them, they got all done, they went back and looked at the rows and the rows are all zigzag because she's never really, she'd never really driven the setting tractor before. Uh, but yeah, they, even she grew up on a tobacco farm and so did he, actually. His dad and mom both grew up on a tobacco farm. And I just found out recently that my granddaddy also grew up on a tobacco farm, and so he knows how to do it too. They didn't have tractors though, they used mules, which was hard, I'm sure. And he was telling me a story about one time they had taken the mules down there to the river so they can get water and stuff, and you know, they swam. And then after they got done swimming, they, were, they had a race back to the house on the mules. And my granddaddy was on the big mule, I can't remember what they called it, they called it Big Something. But he was on the big mule. He was racing all of a sudden. He falls off the mule and just about falls under it. And the mule almost stepped on him. This is probably boring, y'all. But, you know, I mean, it's just something that I'm just kind of talking. Also, I kind of want to talk about some of the politics that's going on right now. I'm just going to be straight up with y'all. I'm 17, but I turned 18 right before the election. I turned 18 on October 9th, and election day is November the 6th. So I ought to be able to vote if I can get registered. Now, I've been kind of following the politics and stuff, and I'm just going to be honest with y'all. Donald Trump, to me, seems like the best candidate. If, well, he's not the best candidate. But he's the best of the two. 
I would say the best candidate would probably be like Chuck Norris or John Wayne or something like that because they seem like they would get stuff done. But Donald Trump also seems like he would get stuff done. And picking between him and Hillary Clinton, I'm definitely going to pick Donald Trump. Because Hillary Clinton, I have nothing wrong with her being a woman. I would be fine if it was a woman president. A woman president would be fine, but not her. She's been in too many scandals with the emails, Benghazi, you know, that sort of stuff. And she just changed her story too many times. She used to be a lawyer, and this is a long time ago. She used to be a lawyer. All right, so. So she was uh, defending this guy that was a rapist. And when she was defending him, she got him like a year and a half or something like that in prison for raping someone. Now, I understand that she's a lawyer and she's doing his job, but that's just, I mean, a year and a half for raping someone. That's just horrible. You know, Hillary Clinton used to be an extreme, like a, a hardcore conservative. She grew up in a conservative family, then she went to college, and she was going to college to actually be a minister for a church. And then when she was in college, she met a guy, I can't remember his name, but she, she, one of her professors taught her to be like she is now. That's one of my main problems with college is it's too liberal. That's why I don't really want to go to college. That and I don't, I don't know if I want to go to school after I get out of high school. I don't, if I did, I'd probably go for agriculture or trade school or something like that. But the guy that taught her how to be like she is now was the same guy that taught Obama his policies and stuff. So really, the way I see it is that if you elect Hillary Clinton and she becomes president, it's just going to be another four years of Obama. But we have some real issues in today's uh, economy. Not in today's economy, just in America today. And it's just, we've had that killing in Orlando. Killed 50, 49 or 51, I can't remember which one it is, but killed 50, around 50 uh, homosexuals. And injured like 53 of them. And apparently that's okay to do because the guy that did it was apparently discriminated against. I don't care if you're discriminated against or not. That's no reason to go and kill people, whether they're gay or not. I see, I don't, I'm not gay, but I mean, if you are gay, I don't have a problem with you. I don't really care that you're gay, as long as you're not trying to force me to be gay. I'm not one of those Christians that goes around trying to preach you to be different. No, I mean, like, if you're a good person, then that's fine. I think that that's good that you're a good person. I'm not going to try to change you. Because, honestly, there are a lot of Christians out there that aren't good people but they still claim to be Christians. And it's just, it's just a mess, like. Some people just, hold on, I'm trying to think of an example. Uh, some people are just bad people, really. I can't even really think of an example, but I've, I've met some nicer people that weren't Christian than I've met some Christians to be. I've met some more accepting people that weren't Christian. See, I'm I'm a Christian, but I'm not going to try to change you because you are who you are, and I don't have a right to try to change you. 
because it's America, and you can be whoever you want to be, really. If you want to go out and kill 50 people, guess what? You have the freedom to go out and kill 50 people, but you're going to have to face the consequences of it. Just like me, I have the freedom to go buy a gun right now and kill 50 people, but I'm not going to do that because I would have to face the consequences of that. And plus, you know, I'm a Christian. I don't really believe in murder. And some people even think that, you know, being Christian means that you don't believe in murder, but think that if you join the army then some people think that's murder, but it's not. The Bible says, I mean, really, the Bible says that you have to follow those appointed over you. So, if you go into the army and then you're told to kill people, the Bible says that you're supposed to follow those appointed over you, so you have to go kill those people. Just like it says, honor thy father and thy mother. I mean, if your mom makes you go kill a bunch of people, the Bible's fine with that. He says, I know that God pretty much knows that you don't want to do that. And he's not going to punish you for doing that, but he will punish your parent for making you do that. So pretty much, you need to follow your parents no matter what they tell you to do. And the Bible... Is okay with that. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to say the Bible. God is okay with that because He knows that you were just following what you were told to do, and He will punish your parents for telling you to do that. You know what's interesting is after this whole thing in Orlando happened, I read this article about you know they're wanting to ban AR-15 stuff because of it, even though he didn't even use an AR-15, but they're wanting to ban it now because of that you know high capacity you can go in and kill a bunch of people with it so they're wanting to ban it now but what's funny is that I read an article that AR-15 sales skyrocketed after Orlando and you know who was buying them the gays and lesbians <laughs> because they were wanting to protect themselves from people like that now, me, if I was wanting to protect myself, I would probably get a, a pistol or something that I could conceal better. That way, if someone came into a room full of people. Now, granted, if someone came into a room full of people and you were sitting there and had an AR-15 on your shoulder, they would probably be like, I don't need to be here, and they would go somewhere else. But if you're walking around with an AR-15 on your shoulder... And some people are going to be scared of you because they think that you will do that. So I would just get a pistol. And then, you know, if someone comes into a room and tries to shoot some people, they probably get, like, one person, then I'd pull out a gun and shoot them. And, I mean, really, I think that you would be safer if more people carried guns. I don't think outlaw, outlawing guns isn't going to do anything because you can get guns on the black market. It's going to be more expensive but you don't have to go through background checks and stuff like that. It's going to be more expensive to get a gun, but if you really wanted to kill people, you can get a gun off the black market, and then you could go out and kill people. The only thing that gun control is going to do is it's just going to take guns away from people who follow the law. So I don't really understand what they're trying to do with this. It's, I mean, I would feel safer if everyone in our room was carrying a gun Rather than if I was in a room with no one carrying a gun, I would feel safer. Because if I'm in a room full of people with guns, and then someone comes in with a gun and tries to shoot somebody, everyone in that room is going to shoot him, and he's, he's dead. You've just saved a bunch of lives right there. And whether you agree with me or not, that's the way I feel. I feel that... If everyone carried guns, then it's going to make the world a better place. Or not, maybe not a better place, but it'll make the world a safer place. Rather than having the government do all that. I mean, really, gun control people, I see them as kind of hypocrites. Because, 
I mean, someone comes into your house with a gun, what are you going to do? You're going to call someone with a gun. Even if, okay, even if criminals didn't have guns, you don't need a gun to kill somebody. You can kill them with this wrench right here. You can sit there and beat them on the head until they died. Now they're going to have a better chance of living because they can fight you off. But, I mean, it's still, guns aren't the problem. It's just people wanting to kill people is the problem. Like, I could, <laughs> like, let's see this right here. I could kill someone with this drill. I could walk up to someone and I could drill this inside of their head and they could die. Or not they could die, they would die. So, I mean, you could walk around with a battery-powered drill and just go around drilling people's heads. Now, it's going to take a little longer to kill them, but you could still do it if you wanted to. So, really, one person with a gun versus 50 people with a gun is safer than one person with a drill versus people that can't defend themselves. Like, someone comes into my house with a gun and tries to kill me, I'm going to kill them. And hey, you, you don't know. You never know how many lives that could save you killing that dude. Because he could go to your house, and then guess what? After that, he's, he could go to a bar and kill a bunch of people. And if you would have had a gun, you could have stopped him. It's just... I don't know, it's just... A lot of people don't think about things like that. I mean, like, even guns don't even just protect you from people that want to kill you. I mean, they protect you from people that want to do anything to you. Like, someone wants to rape you. They'll probably have a gun if they're going to rape you. But the point is, is that people that kill people, if you want to kill somebody, you're not going to follow the law to do it. So making laws isn't going to stop people from killing people. When was the last time you saw a gun, a, a, a mass shooter, a mass murderer, walk into a place with a gun and then see a sign that says gun, gun free zone and then just say, well, I'm not supposed to be here. I need to leave. You don't because they don't care about the law. They're there to kill people. So making laws isn't going to do anything. I mean, you look in the Old West, everyone had a gun. But yet, I mean, good people died back then, but so did a lot of bad people too. I believe the only way to stop a bad guy with a gun is to have is with a good guy with a gun. Now, honestly, I have nothing against AR-15s. 